Let me call to order the meeting of the Howard's Conservation Commission for September 19, 2018. The first item on the agenda we're going to take is a request for termination of applicability for the Dolan property at 464 Long Pond Drive, renovations of existing boathouse. Did you hand out the um, revised? I think everyone has a revision, but let me, can I have a couple more for my file? Uh, yes. So you all should have had a plan handed out this evening with a slight revision to a wetland line, which didn't really, wasn't consequential to this project. You didn't get one, John? Here you go. Um, yep. Uh, good evening, Dan Croto. This one, it's just a wetland line. You can borrow it. From uh, Moran Engineering. Here is Mike Dwyer, who's working for the um, for the owners uh, on this property. This is a um, boat use. It's a residential lot. It's a boat use property, that, or pond use property. The owners own um, houses in Harwich Port and they they're using this property uh, for for uh, daytime pond use um, the the project here does go need to go to uh, ZBA uh, Mike could probably fill you in on when that would be for for the um, use of the property because it's does not have a residential structure Sure, I'll speak up. Um, the the project goes to ZBA. Mike could probably fill us in on when that is. Um, it goes to ZBA for a sideline setback and the use of the property, not having a residential structure on it, just being used as daytime boat use. So the the um, what we're here before you tonight for is work on the existing boathouse. There's to be no change to the uh, lower floor, the foundation, um, or the out the first floor the footprint or the foundation itself. So, so for that reason, it should not impact the wetland. Um, and for that reason, we're asking for the request to determine that it doesn't need a notice of intent to um, for for wetland purposes for this project. Uh, Mike had taken this to the um, to the the full town community meeting. community meeting and explained it to them the project, um, and then. And then speaking with the conservation department, the uh, for the type of filing, because it wasn't, because nothing on the ground was changing, and in the long run there was no impact on the wetland itself, that the request for determination on this, looking for the for the uh, negative on the determination, is what what um, we're before the board for. Our questions about how it will be, um, or what the improvements are and um, the process for construction would be um, best handled by uh, Mike, the, the one who would be doing the work. So with that, I'll, um, I'll ask for uh, comments. Okay, thank you. Do you have a summary for us? Mm -hmm. So this is solely for um, work to the existing boathouse. Again, no foundation work, no change in footprint. If there is any, um, there will be potentially a future filing to obtain better access down to that boathouse in terms of walking access. But that's not on the table for you tonight. It is just um, get the footprint staying the same. They'd like to um, bump out on the on the top essentially, or not the top, the second floor. Um, why can I never think what they are? Dormers and the dormers. <laughs> and a Juliet balcony over an existing deck area. So no footprint change. Basically, we just still want to, I thought you would want to condition access for construction as well as debris control on the site. 
Um, it's right on the edge of the pond and the topography is so low that a lot of that area is wetland anyways around it. Um, so containment of debris and construction materials <coughs> important. We talked in our community development meeting, so with the building commissioner, myself, planning and health about this project um, with Mr. Dwyer and um, essentially said, you know, while electricity might be a possibility down here, it'll be up to the boards as far as right now there's no proposed plumbing um, as currently, I believe. There is no plumbing to be ever be okay. proposed. Okay, perfect. I didn't know if between the time we talked or not. Yeah, if that no, no, we, we, we just a boathouse. Yeah, it's just a boathouse. We would like to bring electricity back there, yep. but that'll be in the other filing. In the other filing, okay. Um, so I would recommend because, um, so any questions people might have as far as zoning and other things like that, this isn't the board, this isn't the board for that. The only question we did have on site, there's some really large tupelos near the existing boathouse. Will, there, will those need to be trimmed? There would be some trimming of anything that would be hitting the actual structure okay. because that would be that would be detrimental to the structure. Mm -hmm. uh, but there wouldn't be any clearing or any anything of substantial matter. It did not look like any removals were needed; just some pruning of those tupelos. So, um, I would recommend approval with a, it. Actually, should be a negative two determination. That boathouse technically is in the wetland itself. Um, so instead of a negative three, as I had written in my site summaries, it should be a negative two. Thanks, Amy. Let's um, go around the table. Mark, do you have any comments? As, as it's uh, spelled out in the narrative, I don't have any questions. Fine. Yeah, it seems like the main impacts would be uh, during construction, if there were to be any. Yeah, we delineated, we're going to put down some silt fence around in the property, down around there. And then we're proposing to put down um, uh, pine stock to use as a path to walk down. Because mm -hmm. right now there is very, there are two very small sections of boardwalk, and then interrupted of mud paths. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the, the property gets very wet, as you probably all well know. Um, so we will be bringing um, debris up and materials down through there. So I would like to bring something like a small dingo machine and put down like two by 12 for it to run on and then we'd pick those up every night and stack them so it wouldn't have, it wouldn't be a, you know any kind of a long-term detrimental effect to the grounds okay. um, what, what type of oversight would we have Amy with the uh, negative determination there be any you can, yep so it is while it's not recorded it's a three-year permit we can put conditions on there definitely want to um, meet you on site prior to the, the start of work Absolutely. and go over the construct, especially the construction access. Um, but sa same thing as like a notice of intent, notification of start work, a meeting down there, routine checks. Um, it's really not a bad spot to go check on every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful spot. <laughs> you know, um, so we, we still kind of condition it, so we have some okay. leeway yeah. there. Yeah, it being in the wetland, right. it, it is sensitive, so it'd be nice to mm -hmm. check on it. The other thing I, I noticed when I was down there, it looks like several years ago, um, a large portion of the wetland was cleared of, of shrubs and maybe some trees, and it's now growing back. Yeah, um, I've worked with Amy as far as clearing up that mm -hmm. permitting that fiasco and everything. Yeah. I believe we're all set as far as that's concerned. We are. Just, my I understanding is, is there is to be absolutely no more work done there. I do right. have a permit application in that I have to go and mark some of the downed trees throughout the foot area mm -hmm. and that I just talked to her before the meeting Amy, yep. right? and uh, I will mark those trees out go through with that and hopefully have that permit approved before anything like that is done throughout those woodlands okay that sounds good the, the other thing I was looking at um, kind of right at the area where your limit of work and silt fences are proposed I think it would be advantageous to have either some plantings like a green fence or maybe a split rail fence or we we were planning with the second application or the second hearing that we're going to come in for because we have to bring if we're allowed to bring electricity down we have to find a way of bringing that down so mm -hmm. we were planning to put what, what do you call that fence a split rail the fence split that we're rail fence 
yeah. which, along there, which would keep people from going just into that, that area. Just that keeps the kids from playing in the exactly. wetland. The right. Exactly. Yeah. So that would that that will be in the uh, coming forward the second proposal. Okay. Yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. Stan, um, you mentioned you're just adding to it, so you don't have to do any work to the existing structure, like any of the footings or anything like that. The frame is is in excellent condition. I believe there was a, a rebuild in the '80s. I think it was somewhere back in the '80s. There, there was a rebuild, or maybe even the early '90s. Uh, frame is in excellent. Uh, condition the structure is sitting on concrete blocks right. um, we don't think it's worth trying to lift the structure up to put you know concrete tube you know uh, solder Sounds tubes in it would be just too crazy machine work etc cetera, etc cetera, too much damage so you know everything looks pretty level pretty square we will probably have to adjust one or two of the blocks and we'll just jack the building up an inch or so adjust the block mm -hmm. put it in there whatever the case may be but other than that that's it No, no comments? Um, we any, may have some in the audience. Yeah. Any comments from the audience? Not for this one? Okay, we have one <laughs> written comment, I think, that I'd like to read into the record. Oh, sure. Um, Greg Stone from 462 Long Pond Drive was unable to make the meeting, but he wanted to provide a comment. And his comment is, very little has been done to improve this structure over the years and the proposed improvements would not be a detriment to the surrounding wetlands and would be an improvement to the boathouse in the neighborhood. So you have that one comment for the record. Can uh, I have that for the file? Sure. Thank you. I think I did get that via email. Okay. Okay. Well, if somebody would like to make a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the request for determination of applicability for 464 Long Pond Drive for the renovations of the existing boathouse. Second. Okay, yeah, so under discussion, it's going to be a, a negative two yes. determination, and we're going to put in a condition that there would be no plumbing allowed on the structure. Any other conditions, or is that it? Talk about the start work and the um, basically the site oversight. Okay. Yeah, like the see some after the fact. Also, after the fact, what? Make sure it all. It all oh yes. Okay. Just to be mm -hmm. clear, I'll I'll schedule an appointment to come down before we start construction, walk through the property, and have then the limit of work up somewhere in the me. middle of the construction, and then at the end of construction. Yeah, I mean I may stop by every once in a while too, but I won't get in your way. No, no problem at all. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 None opposed. Motion carries. Please sign this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. And folks, um, Mike Locke from the yeah. trust is here. Mm -hmm. So can we quickly, because that'll take a, sure. just a couple minutes. Yep. Go to that. Of course I do. Like this one. This bag, right? In my bat in my buggy always has about fifty pounds in it. Uh, Michael Locke, what? executive director of the nonprofit uh, Harwich Conservation Trust. Um, here uh, seeking um, your signature approval of uh, two conservation restrictions. Um, <clears throat> one is uh, for the uh, former uh, hall property. <clears throat> the uh, purchase of that property by the town for conservation purposes was approved by a town meeting in May 2015. Um, the town uh, and Arthur Hall Sr. Um, completed the transaction with a recording of the deed and. Um, December, uh, I mean February, pardon me, of 20, in 2016, the use of Town Community Preservation Act open space funds requires a conservation restriction on this property. Uh, and the Harvard Conservation Trust uh, typically partners with a town to fulfill that state statute uh, obligation. So uh, we can start with that project first, and then I can describe the history uh, of acquisition for the the second property. 
uh, also mention that uh, this conservation restriction has already been vetted by town council. Mm -hmm. Any comments on this, Andy? Just in general for both of them, I mean, it's something that the commission, for both of them, the commission voted to endorse the acquisition of these parcels. This was just somehow, some way of an oversight with, with this. So we're just trying to clean this up and get it, get it in the books. So I, I would recommend the conservation restrictions on both parcels. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. Any comments from the commissioners? No? No. I think it's a great concept. No. And uh, so we're just going to approve the, the, the concept of a conservation restriction? You have, um, the, we have the restriction language. Okay. Yep. So, so it would be to approve the restriction. Okay. But on both of them, <coughs> on both of the park yeah, And sign them. Right. Yeah, and I have the signature pages. Okay. Have we all seen the language? Um, I gave, because the document itself was about 200 pages, well, the both of them together are about 200 pages long, we gave you kind of a summary okay. of that. Yep. Um, it's their typical, I mean, may, Mike, if you want to go over the basics of what the restriction has, it's our typical conservation restriction allowing for mm -hmm. access, public access and passive recreation. Mm -hmm. mm, so just by way of background for everybody, uh, just to back up a step, uh, mm -hmm. conservation restriction is a legal instrument which extinguishes development on some or all of a, a, a parcel of land. In this case, it's really a... Um, overlay protection since the properties each of these properties were acquired for conservation purposes mm -hmm. to begin with and each are held under the custody uh, at care and control of the Conservation Commission um, so uh, these conservation restrictions are pretty boilerplate in terms of their protective uh, measures uh, there's a list of prohibited uses uh, which essentially uh, pertain to uh, development of various natures on the properties and there's a list of uh, allowed uses mm -hmm. which uh, are oriented towards low impact such as uh, maintenance uh, of trails um, some are existing already mm -hmm. recall that the hall property completes a, compl a uh, walking trail loop around west reservoir with the adjoining bike trail and uh, the existing town bells neck conservation lands rel relative to trails uh, the acquisition of uh, Sutphin lot uh, two and three by the town um, is uh, adjacent to existing town conservation lands known as the Island Pond Conservation Lands. And uh, there's the Island Pond Trail uh, that uh, winds its way through these two properties. It's a cart path that um, extends through the Island Pond Conservation Lands, which doubles as a walking trail. Um, so uh, then the rest of the documents uh, include uh, some sketch plans showing the uh, properties uh, in their context of um, surrounding lands as well as uh, plans of land related to each one um, and then the signature pages so there are four uh, signature approvals typically uh, needed um, in this case since it's a, a town conveying this um, <coughs> let me just work walk you right through it mm -hmm. so one signature page is the Conservation Commission um, the second is the Board of Selectmen so that's where we'll stop next uh, the third is the actual trustees of the Harwich Conservation Trust since this conservation restriction is held by the trust and governed by the trustees and then lastly approval by um, the state's um, secretary of the executive office of en energy and environmental affairs restriction is returned uh, to um, Barnstable uh, County Register of Deeds and recorded. Mm -hmm. So it's a public document. Okay. Um, should we vote for them both at the same time or should we have separate votes? You can do them both at the same time. It doesn't, okay. if you think you're going to vote the same way for both of them. Yeah, I think we will. Yeah. Um, one question on the uh, reservoir parcel. Yes. Are there any restrictions to um, recreational activities for people using the waterfront? To, to access the water or the waterfront. <clears throat> Let's see. I didn't see any. But. Uh, <coughs> I do not see anything in the prohibited uses section. Just as in the rest of town land. Um, right, because it's adjoining 
uh, Bell's right. Neck Conservation it, Land. It would be the same as the rest of Bell's Neck Conservation yeah. Area. Okay. All right. Well, I would like to make a motion and, uh, and thank you for all your good work on this. These mm -hmm. are two great parcels. And uh, move that we approve the conservation restrictions for both parcels. I second it. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. If you would sign both of these, that would be appreciated. And Mike, we can either have it notarized by Jen in the morning right That's here. Fine. Or yeah. if you want to take them tonight, you're welcome to. Tomorrow's great. Okay. We'll Thank you. you. can sign both of these. Thanks, okay? everybody, yeah. for the continuing uh, partnership between the town and yeah. the Thanks, trust Mike. to acquire these conservation areas. Thank you. Yeah. We'll call you in the morning. Hmm. Well, we have a second here. Can everybody sign in? Thank you. <clears throat> Just if you speak during the meeting, it makes it easier when we write the minutes to know who you are. <laughs> what <do> you left? <laughs> okay. Can you saw everyone signed both of those there? Mm-hmm. Good. Okay, next we have a notice of intent for the King property on 30 Lopeth Avenue. It's a continued hearing, and I suspect it's been requested to continue again. Yes, they've asked for a continuation um, until October 3rd. October 3rd, okay. So we need to vote on that, though. Okay, I, I move that we continue the hearing for 30 Lopeth Avenue until October 3rd. Second. 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 All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, next up we have a notice of intent for the Tinsley property at 53 Strainway. It's a proposal to raise the existing dwelling and construct new dwelling with pool and septic system. Good evening. My name is Danny Gonzalez with Down Cape Engineering. I'm here um, with the prospective buyer, Paul Tinsley, and our proposed project at 53 Strand Way. Uh, what we're proposing is a raise and replace of the existing dwelling, um, and we are going to um, also put in a pool and a pool house. The new house is going to be a five-bedroom house, down one bedroom from the existing six. Um, the existing dwelling does have an indoor pool. We wanted to kind of move that outside to take advantage of the um, kind of sunlight and, and nice views there. Uh, we are kind of shortening this building up, moving it further away from the wetland. So not only are we uh, reducing the hardscape, there's a little typo on our plan. It actually is a 341-foot de decrease between the um, 50 and 100 foot buffer there um, but we are also making it um, legal as far as zoning is concerned reducing the lot coverage meeting all the zoning setbacks um, because we're getting further away from the wetland going down a bedroom we feel like this is a net positive uh, for the site and I would be happy to answer any questions you might have okay. Amy, do you have a summary, please? Sure. Um, as Danny said, there is a net reduction in hardscape, which includes not only the home itself, but stuff such as patios, decks, um, basically impervious area, including pool. We lump that all into um, essentially the coverage. So there is a net reduction in hardscape. In um, there's actually not there's there's nothing going on in the 0 to 50 and in the 50 to 100 there's a reduction of 341 square feet there is um, activity going on outside the 100 foot buffer zone but that doesn't have anything to do with the conservation commission um, so in regards to the project it is an it is a benefit um, during this process it came to light the question of the property line and um, the past owners um, use of property that may not be theirs so with this the new plan shows the, the Old Mill Point Association lot on it and the only, one of the conditions I would recommend that this board follow it or put on if they were to approve this project 
is on the um, property, actual property line um, that during or immediately after construction that a split rail fence be established on that property line um, and then that the current owners and the association work together in the, um, to naturalize or to come up with another plan for the area that is currently lawn as well as um, a stone wall. Um, because now that we know that this this should not have been used as it as it was and Danny and I spoke on the phone briefly about this prior to the meeting about maybe installing a fence on the existing property line there um, and then other than that I would recommend for the for the new property just being so close to um, Nantucket Sound dunes area I would recommend going to a natural lawn program in the 0 to 50 foot buffer which is consistent with our other um, with our other things that we've permitted um, you know just drip irrigation in the 0 to 50 with um, temporary irrigation to establish native grasses and then we can talk about in the 50 to 100 but um, in general the Commission does not favor um, fertilization in the um, 100 foot buffer and actually as of October 1st that's regulations all changing anyway so um, and in other stuff as far as roof runoff we want to make sure there's no runoff on the site even though it's pretty flat so everything should go into dry wells that is from a roof structure pool water if it's ever to be um, drained should be um, either discharged outside the 100 foot buffer or off-site um, but in general, um, provided those conditions, I would recommend approval. The edge of wetland right now is by our, is that toe of dune where the stone wall or brick wall, sorry, is in place right now. That is an artificial coastal bank, and that's where your zero foot starts. So again, nothing is happening proposed to happen other than a fence and figuring out what we're going to do with the uh, Old Bill Point lot between the parties. Um, but nothing's happening as far as this go as this project goes in regards to the house in the zero to fifty foot buffer. Thank you, Amy. Uh, I would see if the commissioners have any comments, Mark. Um, no, overall it's pretty straightforward with me. Um, I'm concerned about what will take place between the the lot line and the and the existing stone wall, because obviously that shouldn't be what it is. Um, the only additional item that I would feel would be any benefit would be to you propose a paver driveway. If it was a permeable paver, I can see where that would be advantageous to the site in general. I think we were going to try to save some of the pavers that were already on site and, and kind of reuse some of that, um, but we could look into a, to a you know, we'll consideration. See. Yeah, consider it. Try to get to after this one. Thanks, Mark. This might be more of a question for you, Amy. So okay, given that the property hasn't changed hands yet, and my oh. understanding that the wall is unpermitted and should be removed, um, uh, shouldn't the uh, property owner? do that before it is something happens. the Conservation Commission can condition if it's an unpermitted structure for its removal um, however we not just the removal we want to see some sort of plan to restore the area because if you just remove the wall things will collapse and you, nobody wants that so um, it seems yeah. like once uh, the transaction goes through it would be, uh, this is an old complicated um, well, I mean, Old Mill Point property, and we'll open it up for discussion, I'm sure, afterwards. I mean, it, it, it is their property, technically. So regardless of now or when Mr. Tinsley acquires this property, I don't know if there's too much of a difference. Okay, well, maybe I'll wait to hear what they yeah. said in regards to If I could offer a comment, that, that wall goes down quite a ways. It's not just behind this property. We understand. Okay, yes. I just said, I mean, it's... I don't know how long it's been there. I'm assuming it's been there an awful long time. I have no but, idea. Yeah. Put on the wall. I thought. I mean, there were two different materials. That other wall to the well, facing the house from the from the ocean, 
it was yeah. to the right is different material than the wall that you're looking at and my understanding is the other walls were within the property line of those homes it could be yes I mean, it could be I'm not sure I'm just saying I know the right. wall <coughs> continues on both sides right mm -hmm. but no I was looking at it and it's yeah. definitely different it's material different right. material yeah. um, basically the same concerns like Mark said uh, with what's going to happen with that uh, area within the mm -hmm. zero to 50 and again I don't know any Who's change there? would need to come back to the Conservation Commission for the removal of the wall and the naturalization or, or whatnot of that area. So I'd we'll be again, happy to work with whoever's going to take that on. So, And I guess that would be the question. Who would, I mean, that's not up to us. That's up Right to now it the is association property, so it falls to them. If they want to pursue anything with the previous or current potential owners as far as because it's been unlawfully used right. that's up to them right. we don't get into the legal aspect so it would be uh, the association that as we you, would as go you to. might imagine I'd be very interested as to what they want to do of course so, <laughs> for my own sake yes well those are I mean you guys can have those conversations sure. after what are, is there somebody here from the association well, what? Oh, yeah okay, let's uh, uh, uh let's finish, finish going yeah, on the so table please, so yeah. I'm, I'm just, all you all sir? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, so just to, to follow up on the wall, has anybody claimed that it's pre-existing, that it wouldn't be jurisdictional to us? It is not really known because the house itself was built originally, um, did I say in the 50s for this one? What was it? I can't remember. I mean, it's it's been there a very long time. Um, it is blocking the landward movement of the dune. The dune is right up next to it. Um, but as I mean, it's it's not new by any means. Okay. So. So we'd like to see it gone, but it may be permittable because. Right. I mean, something that maybe we can look for in the future. And again, I want to just say that I mean, this just it's almost like two discussions. It's part of this project, but it's really not. We're here to look at the the rebuild of the house. This just happened to happen. Sure. So I don't think it should affect a decision here. Okay. For the house. But if, if the association were to look for, or the, with the newer old owner, the maybe a, a softer solution, but still some protection, because um, you certainly don't want to see any er, and heightened erosion there. But it is, um, it is quite a, it is seaward of the high water line. So I could see maybe a soft solution, such as a, as a fiber roll or things like that, covered and planted or something with shrubs might be an applicable thing there. But, um, something to obviously protect upland properties but also protect that resource area so okay. i wouldn't recommend just ripping it out and seeing what happens well, so well along with that with the wall is that whole area lawn. of lawn yes okay. correct correct and that is also pre-existing so they're not proposing to change the, the lawn at all. Well, right? this is well. It's not on the property. Well, it's it's not, not on the, the lawn's not on the property either. A section of it. Part of the yard, but right. it's not their yard. Yeah. Yeah. 1955 was 50, the house. That's what I thought. According to the assessors. Oh. Yeah. Okay. The okay. wall probably is not doesn't look that old, but. Right. Okay. Do you have any comments? I don't have further questions. Okay. See, this is all lawn in here mm -hmm. and hedge, and they're using that as part of the yard. Right. right. Now. Okay. Do you have any questions? Anybody about the house itself, the house project? Um, it's the, you know, the, the footprint is going to be reduced, so there's no need to mitigate. Um, so it, uh, it really comes down to work conditions and, and uh, conditions on the construction mm -hmm. itself. Um, there's no proposals to change the zero to 50 the lawn. You're going to keep it the same? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, for whatever you know, restrictions Amy had mentioned about uh, yeah. eliminate nitrates, etc. I'm sorry. No. Go none ahead. of the zero to 50 was in, within none of the lawn. Was yeah, we're not touching the zero to 50. That, that whole piece, zero to 50, is not their property. No, it's oh, a, no, well, it's well, a triangle. It's a triangle of it. Yeah. Okay. It's a triangle piece that's, that's not ours. Um, yeah, it's like a pie shape. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Really I, I thought the 50 just, right there. I thought it was just the wall. Okay. It's yeah. Like a triangle. Okay. So, so just to confirm, 
you're stating that all of the hardscape, including the pool and the pool house, and the new construction is a reduction in footprint relative to the existing house. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's everything is becoming conforming the present code it was non-conforming basically everything else before. correct so not only on the total site if you look under the zoning summary we're going from 42.9 yeah. basically lot coverage which includes most hardscape we're going down to 34.9 35 is mm -hmm. the re required but that's the entire site just between the 50 and 100 it's actually a net reduction of uh, 341 square feet so but the drive out front is extensive and so is that part of the reduction you're talking about? You're reducing the size of the drive as well? Well, that, that's part of the 42.9% going down to about 35%. Yeah, that's total site. Yes. So it yes. is getting re reduced. That's being reduced. It's also. not part of our reduction. It's, it's outside conservation yeah. jurisdiction, yeah. but it is, we are reducing, reducing it to meet it. zoning yeah. requirements. There's still a net reduction in the 50 to 100 for Correct. Zone, which yeah. is mm -hmm. something we always look for, and we often don't get it. So I, right. think, I think that's great. There was, uh, speaking to Paul before, and Amy, I know you mentioned the fence. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think if that wall is, is, well, you guys might not like it, it is kind of a nice buffer now. I think if that's going to be changed in the future, then maybe we, we might want to hold off on the fence for now just to see kind of what the future solution is in that area. You know, we don't want to, mm -hmm. we don't want to put something in that may be getting kind of impacted in the future if there is any any work to be done on the on the parcel that is not ours yeah basically but the I, I view a split rail fence as somewhat temporary but yet still a, a physical indicator of where that line should be but it's really the, the what you're talking about though is demarking or creating a demarcation of the association lot the differentiation between the two lots I don't understand. I, I just, I mean, we understand it. They understand that. I just don't understand. I don't get what a split rail fence, which will cut across diagonally across the property. Actually, it'll look, it'll look terrible. But what what it does? I mean, it doesn't prevents the future unit, unit, owner of this current property from continuing to use other land. That, I mean, and it also keeps them off of a sensitive resource area. So. It can be a temporary measure. We can discuss it. I know that the people on the association probably want to speak to this as well tonight. But um, it, I, I, it could have been something more permanent. But I thought a split rail. Well, except that it's just, I guess my concern is that it's, you're asking us, one, then to do some construction within the 50 foot buffer. No. Well, that's where it is. That's where this no. it, it would be within yeah, it would the be. 50. Yeah. It Some fall of it. within that, so we it would require a very. I mean, you require your approval to do so. And we're doing. We want to do nothing inside the right. fifty foot. Well, let me ask. What What is the interest of the commission to have that? I don't. I'm not sure. I agree with that. Is that? You know. Yeah, it would be it's supposed to be temporary. So. The, the idea is, and we're going to hear from the audience, I believe, as to whether or not this uh, wall will be removed, and they're actually naturalized dunes in that area where there's currently lawn. Right, and, and, and we would like that, but that's not proposed. That's, that's not part of this proposal. I, I, uh, I don't know. So I, I don't know if we can rule on that. No, that would have to be a new, whatever happens, I mean, that would have to be a new proposal in front of conservation, so. Well, well I look at the fence as, as demarking for what happens to the lawn in front of the house, not but it's only part the association and how we're going to condition the treatment of that one and everything mm -hmm. and to keep it separate from whatever happens with the association. Correct. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. If I could, sir, though, what, what we're willing to do is differentiate that within the 50 feet on the lawn, that's fine. But as this would carve a piece right straight through that, which doesn't make sense to me. Um, if it would seem to me, if the association, you know, has an issue now with a non-permitted wall and needed to address that, the what my big concern with in the property is that this association lot is basically on the east side of the property, comes up about five feet north from the existing seawall, and then cuts across to about 
20 feet north on the west side. Mm -hmm. uh, it would just really kind of look oh, terrible, to tell you the truth. Aesthetics uh, are in our purview. I, but it, I appreciate that, but if I'm putting a $5 million house, they'd mean something to me. So, uh, I, so my point, though, is it would seem to me it would make more sense if the association and I, and I'm, I'm a pretty reasonable person, you know, we gave them some of the property we owned on the east side, and they gave us some of the property they owned on the west side, so we came across straight like the wall is now, and I think everybody would look better. I mean, it, just, it would just seem to be a much nicer and much better solution. If, if they, they're willing to work to together, I don't have an issue with it, but I just don't want to. Yeah, we can't. We not, saw an issue, and it's. He's not proposing a fence. Right. It sounds like we want a condition offense, but I, I'm not sure what a, why. What about the offense of plantings? to differentiate the sure why is that our business though yeah, I, I guess that's my question because I'm willing to do I mean, technically it's in it, it is technically in violation <laughs> the lawn shouldn't be there nothing should be there right well so, if it's pre-existing then it's it's clear and and the wall is probably pre-existing so if, if the lawn has been there before our regulations then they can keep it so I'm, I'm just trying to understand what the benefit would be to put a fence right on the 50 line um, and it's not being proposed, so it's to me. I'm, I'm not sure why, folks. And I, I didn't make it there today, and you guys had a chance to talk about. It, so please let me know, you know can, the reason. Can the owner and the association agree between themselves what to do with that whole piece yeah. of land, even though there's right. there's a lot line going through right. it, and get the conservation commission right. to sign on to that agreement, right. and then you don't have. To you don't right. have to put, you know, that's fine. That's very open. I'm open to, as right. I just mentioned, talking about something like that. But yeah, I, I really have a serious problem with trying to do a, a split rail fence that's cutting diagonally across. But it's the lot line. Uh, oh, I hear you. I understand that. It just looks terrible. I mean, the lot line. Somebody screwed up 50, 60 years ago when they did yeah. this, tell you the truth, as to how they. Yes. Right, but so, I mean, but what I think what's being said and what's being perhaps not being understood is the lot line is the end of the world, and the world is flat. When you step over, you fall <laughs> off. I appreciate that. So the area beyond it needs to be addressed, but that clearly needs to be between right. you and the exactly. owner and so forth. That's what I'm saying. Do that. That. I don't think that should be a condition. That, that's, that's, my, that's, that's fine, my, yeah. but I just I don't want to, knowing that it's not, does that area does not belong to this pro to the property? I just want to make it known. We can put it in the minutes that that we understand that, and that the conservation commission understands that, and that right. this area should be naturalized in the future. So, in, in terms of getting to naturalizing, I think the things we'd like to see is is no more fertilizer use in that zero to fifty, yeah. and then maybe moving the wall and having a different means to. Yeah. Enhance the dune. Th those two features would be, I think, an environmental benefit. Mm -hmm. The fence, I'm, I'm, I understand it, 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 it boundary between the properties, but I'm not sure that's an environmental benefit. Okay. Well, my question goes back to what conditions on the lawn within the 50 to 100 at that point. Well, we can't authorize any activity on somebody. This is the, what's not in front of us. The only thing that's in front of us tonight is this property. That's what I'm talking about. Their right. lawn. So their point. lawn in the zero to 50, that would be the no, you know, that would be a natural grass mix, no fertilization, temporary irrigation to get things going. But for the lawn that currently exists on the association property. No, I understand that, but I'm saying on their away. lawn, the zero to 50, but also the 50 to 100. Right. So the 50 to 100. That's where I was looking at the fence as being a demarcation as to, oh. for them, in terms of. Oh, on the 50 line? No, on the, on the boundary <clears throat> on the boundary line. The boundary line is, the, the property line is the in property the 50. Line. The property line. It's in the 50. I'm looking at it from at. how they're going to treat Oh, the lawns and well, there should be no fertilizers in the right. whole 100. And that's why I was looking at a fence or, or plantings or whatever to differentiate their property. You will have the work limit line, which mm -hmm. is is pretty much along that angled property line there. I mean, I, 
we're obviously not going to go over that when we're I'm doing talking on a long term basis of how that lawn is maintained in the future. So you're talking about the 100 foot line, essentially. Sure. So what he's saying is that the 100 foot line, I mean, we're not allowed for we're not allowing fertilization, permanent irrigation, things like that. So something at the 100 foot line, where we would no, I know. No. I mean, but basically, I mean, you can go off there's, the site plan. Yeah, I mean, there's not a ton of lawn between the no. 50 and 100 anyway. No. Um, I, I mean, I don't know that we could even get irrigation in the area yeah. that we would have there. Uh, yeah. So. Would you be willing to accept a condition to have no fertilizer, and pesticide, and herbicide use in the 0 to 100? Yeah. I think that was all right. Yeah. And I think that's really all we can do tonight. Mm -hmm. um, any comments from members of the audience? Yeah, I have a question. I'm on the west side of your If you would just say your name, that would be wonderful. 6013. That's 47 Street. Nice to see you. Sir, what's your name? Atardo. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just wondering if there's a difference between what Jack Vidario, the current owner, the current owner, thought. And what the new line is relative to the back. Uh, is the the new house and the layout of the house and the pool and the pool house, does that conform to the new property line that's been established? I can't say that it's a new property line. I can just say that this plan well, that we have in well, front correct, correct. is a land surveyor who did this. So Yeah, correct. So he, this is you here? Yes. With the pool so the existing house, you can see it here. We're only 7.4 feet away from your lot line. Yeah. We're moving to at least 20 feet away. We're going to meet all the current zoning setbacks. Okay. And the pool location is, is, is conforms, conforms to this line here. Yeah. Yeah, we're way. The, the rear setback is um, 20 feet as well. And um, yeah, we meet that. We meet the side step. We meet all current zoning setbacks with from this line. Yes. Yes. From the Rear. from the Diderio property, not from not from what the Diderios thought they owned. Correct. From the yeah. actual yeah. Yeah. yes, the yeah. actual lot lines. Yeah. The other question I have is, what's the duration of the raising going to be? How long will it be? It'll be pretty quick. We're well, we thinking a couple, like, days. couple days. days. Two days. What? The Two demo. Days to take the house to demo. Two days. <laughs> <laughs> He's done it for me before. Are you going to drop a bottom on it? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. The, the other question is, uh, has this material, has that been thorough? I'm sorry, what? Investigation of has, has this material in the house? Um, no, I mean, we did a home inspection. Was there anything thorough that you have? I'm just in general. I want to stress this in life. What did they get this as far as you know? How about that? 55 reading you were going to take You didn't do it right. I think you should do it right. I'm going to take it out of there. Is that, I mean, everything's going to go. Yeah. Well, I'm worried about what happens with the wind and the dust and the fumes. I, I don't know how to address that. It's, um, right it's not really our yeah, purview. Yeah. Will it be silk fences? Um, He's worried about, like, wind and blown. Yeah, like, the other question I have is, is there going to be some kind of barrier mm -hmm. to prevent? There will be a barrier during the, during the uh, raising. We have a lim what we call a limit of work, which is silt fence and straw wattles that has to stay up at all times, so they have to stay within those confines. A lot of times, and contractors will use construction fence too. Yeah, if you set up the construction fence on your side of the property, to avoid any of those concerns. You will there will be a, a very fine covering that goes over there. Will be nothing to penetrate. Okay. A typical silt fence is three feet high or two. Well, a little less than three, usually. Yeah. Less than three? What? This is a silt so fence to control the debris. Construction fence will be much higher. Yeah. About eight feet high. Okay. Any other comments from the audience? Yeah, I do. I'm Mark Murphy. I'm the butter, also okay. a member of the OMP board. And I think this might help if I could share this. This is your property. Mm -hmm. Of course, you give it. This? Yep. yep, you can give it to the chair. So this will help. Thank show. you. Vis a vis this. So this depicts one seventh of the property. Mm -hmm. So at the end of, and, and the other photograph shows the other side of the wall and the extensive erosion that's occurring and has continued to occur. So from Old Mill Points Association, 
you know, there's a fundamental concern that this coastal bank issue is fundamental. And to the extent the removal of the wall is under consideration by the board, the concern is measuring the coastal bank from the existing wall is very limited in terms of focus to the extent that Obel Points rights aren't being protected long term. Because to the extent anything is done with the wall, I think the coastal bank just moves in. Mm -hmm. The other issue I have to mention to the board is, as a board, our board, Old Mill Point Board, we've been particularly unsuccessful in negotiating any terms with the prospective buyer. So we would like you know, your full consideration. Excuse me, if I could interrupt, no one's ever talked to me from your board. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've had lots of discussions with your attorney about the easement, and numbers have been floated in terms of purchase prices. I was privy to all those conversations, well, so I beg me. to differ. Uh, uh, excuse me again, because I'm a pretty reasonable person. We have tried to talk to your board, you know, Mr. and the board insisted that just Mr. Daddario speak to the board, and that's how it was left, because I would have been glad to speak to you at any time. We had conversations with the current owner trying to negotiate this, and the board spent extensive time and we could get nowhere fast. So the concern is to protect the beach rights and the coastal bank that currently is at issue. I think the photograph speaks to the erosion at that groin. And right now, you know, the wall is truly a false barrier to protecting. And so from a measurement perspective, looking at the current wall, I think gives a false sense of security to that 50-foot buffer and the 100-foot buffer. So we would certainly, at a minimum, look to have a fence, but sunline a demarcation because this, frankly, in our opinion, gives a false illusion to where the boundary line is. It looks as if all this property is owned by 53 Strandway, and this is Old Mill Point property. And that's a fundamental concern that we have. Well, I think we've addressed that on, on our plans, that we, we recognize that. We've it's not addressed at all in the plan. You know, it's, it's something that has to be addressed on our behalf. You know, it's currently continuation of the lawn so it looks continuous with a linear line of separation that is not the lot line. Right. It, it would seem that this would be contingent on the, the sale of the property. But this, this, I mean, it, you would think this issue would have to be resolved. Correct. It's sale an open property. issue, and it's a concern to the Old Mill Point Board. So I, I wonder if we should um, continue this until they have better resolution as to what they're going to do. But what? No, fairness. What's before us right now? It's it's two separate issues. Right. What in front? What is in and in, in, with all due respect, um, it's the wall. While it is a conservation matter because of its location and proximity to the dune, property disputes are a civil matter. Um, so while the I think the conservation commission can say, <laughs> we would be very open to working with whomever, to resolve the issue of the wall and naturalize the area or entertain proposals for what it could be um, if there are soft solutions proposed but i think right now we do have a plan that clearly shows that um, mr daddario does not own the section um, of area that is lawn and wall so we've, we've made that known here and that um, we're looking forward to seeing a resolution for that but for this particular property this project meets our, our regulations and I, and I do think that we're looking at pre-existing structures that you know went in before our regulations I don't know if it went in before 78 yeah so does anyone have any idea when how old that wall is yeah but can I ask a question on that Amy? so technically it would be up to the association to come up with a plan to do whatever to change that, remove Correct. that wall or naturalize the, the land that per pertains to them mm -hmm. and present that to us. Yep. Yeah, we have no... Now, in, in between that, if they want to do something with the owner, that's up to them to come up with some kind of compromise button. Right, but exactly. But the bottom line is it's up to the association to present... Yeah, it is their, their property, so they have every right to um, look into alternatives for that area that would also that would protect you know the, the dunes and protect your, your your access rights and everything like that um, you there's nothing precluding you from going on that property you know if I may mr. chairman can I request a continuance because candidly I don't want the issue open okay. I, want, I want a resolution I've tried to get a resolution with the board 
yeah. for a long time without any success through Mr. D'Addario, none whatsoever. So okay. I, I, I want to know where I stand as sure. it relates to that issue. I, yeah, this is fine with me. But I, that's the case. I'm the other buyer. I'm, uh -huh. I'm, I'm 2C, which I'm done. Yep. No, no relation. <laughs> uh, and I'm not on the board, uh, but I'd love to see a resolution with you two of you as well. Me too. Well, it seems okay. to me that the board and you have to figure it out. Yeah, that's um, what I'd like to do. That's then, what I wanted and, and, to and do. If you, and if you've been speaking through mouthpieces, yep. um, then you should get together and, and figure it yeah. out by yourself. Because exactly. right now, what's, happened, what's exactly. happening now is, look, I, I get, I think, You've got the illusion that you own the whole property because it's just a um, But on the other hand, if well, that, if that I mean, I know I don't. I know, I, mean, I know, but, but it, it looks, looks that like, way. It yes. looks like it. Right. Um, it does look that but way. If, no question. But I think if the board doesn't give a continuance, you don't work it out. The problem is one of you is robbing one side of the other yeah. of right. the ability to make a, a, a plan. Right. I mean, if that wall weren't there, just to put it in one way, that would be the coastal bank. I mean, that, that property exists for Old Mill Point mm -hmm. because it's a buffer to the beach. Mm -hmm. And so it would be the coastal bank, and I think Mark's right. Um, if you were to measure from the coastal bank, then you wouldn't be in compliance because you'd be closer than 50 feet because the bank would be measured from probably the property line, not the existing wall. It's, again, we have the, the serendipity that whatever happened 50 years ago is serendipity, which is just the reason that you guys should work it out. And mm -hmm. as, a, as a neighbor, that's exactly what I want to do. Yeah. Um, so if, if would, continuance <laughs> is what everybody likes and there's a path to negotiate a resolution, option, then, that strikes me as a lot better than mm -hmm. doing something now and winding up with a problem yeah. later. Yeah. I, I don't want to, uh, as long yeah, as both like parties are willing like to do knowledge. that, I that's like fine. Know. If I'm buying something, I want to know exactly October 3rd is our next. Yeah. Or do you, do you want to schedule October 30 in more time? Or do you want October 17th? October 3rd would be fine if we can. You want to try it, and then if you. I'm not on the board, so I. We can yeah, we can I always submit it. We can always ask. Meeting, so October what three. we meet every other week, pretty much. So our next meeting would be October 3. We can always put it on, and then we can always continue you to October 17th, which would be the next available. But if you want to put it on, there's no harm in that. And seeing what you can do in the meantime. Okay. Well, you, you got, if you can't do it the 3rd, you've told me when you can do it. Yeah, I just would need. Ahead. I'll need to know. I I would need new information. You know, a couple of days prior. So yeah. no, I, um, I do, and I I just want to say, you know, appreciate trying to work this out, but I I do want to say, even if that wall wasn't there and the wet one was further up, we'd still be doing net positive on this site. You know, we're still right. reducing hardscape. We're still we're going down a bedroom. We we want to make this. But you wouldn't yeah, be, it, but you'd be within 50 it's not the, It's not the size, it's the coastal bank issue. And, and I, and, and still a reduction. I, I issue. get that. We have I not understand. addressed, we have no concerns with the other issue. It's, it's the coastal I just, bank. Just to, just to be clear, I mean, the association, I, all I do with the association pay my dues. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but every year, we've been paying dues and other things to replace that, to repair that jetty, to make sure that thing's in, to buy, you know, sand to nourish the beach. So that property that Old Mill Point owns there, Really pretty critical. I get that. I get that it's critical to you, but it's also critical to our usage. Because as this points out, excuse me, you couldn't be in a more precarious location. You know, we've lost so much beach. It's here on the bad, bad side of the jetty. This is the <laughs> other side. So, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. it's the Achilles heel of, of yep. the beach. Okay, it, this sounds good. Uh, <clears throat> so October third is the next available. If we need longer, we can right. figure that out. But we right, have right, any um, more comments on this? particular yeah, project yeah I, I think that's kind of a separate matter I just want to make sure that when we come back if there are any questions about this that we address them the house that so it's not something no. that comes up and then. Uh, yeah I think it seems uh, relatively straightforward with the conditions on the lawn and the hundred foot yep. buffer mm -hmm. the pool water um, I have another question uh, there's a, uh, a well trimmed hedge Mm -hmm. <laughs> the two privet hedges? Yeah, yeah. Will you uh, safeguard that or will you raise that as well? Oh, no, we intend to keep the two hedges. You keep the two hedges? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Okay. Well, then I move that we continue the hearing till October 3rd. Second. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.
Huh? Oh, yes, please. Um, and Mr. Chair, when everyone clears out, we have somebody here for assertive compliance. Maybe we can take her out of order so we can get her out of here. Sure. It's going to be for um, Nathan Walker, 94 Nathan Walker. Okay. Thank you very much. Good night. We're almost done after this. It was looking like a much bigger agenda until about 2 o'clock today. Everyone dropped off. Okay. I know. There's a big, there's a big crowd. Well, actually, I have, once we finish, I have one thing maybe we can take out of order, too, about reorganization of sorts okay. that you may want to stick around yeah. for. Okay. I think we figured something out. So, um, folks, this is um, Mar Marna Bate um, over at Punkhorn, Punk, not Punkhorn, sorry, Nathan Walker Road. And um, do you want me to introduce it for you, the topic? Okay. So, your son owns the property, correct? He does now, yep. yes. So this is right on Walker's Pond, beautiful spot. And this, the, the certificate of compliance is actually very straightforward in and of itself. This is one of those properties that had many orders of conditions. And there's actually newer orders of conditions that supersede this one that's for a sort of compliance for a house. Um, so my, generally I'm going to recommend closing the, you know, issuing the certificate of compliance for this because there are newer orders of conditions that supersede it. But when we, when Nikki went out to the site, she did notice there were a couple of things that, um, we didn't have record of for permits. One being a dock, um, and another being a small, less than a hundred square foot shed greater than 50 feet, like right up near, kind of near the house in the north corner, but um, greater than 50 feet away, but less than 100 feet. So um, Marna came in and we discussed it and we actually found a septic plan from 91 that did show the, um, the shed, but we don't have any record of the dock. So upon speaking with, with Marna, we said, you know, the dock is going to have to come out until it can be further permitted. It is the purview of the board to issue any fi a fine if you if you wish. We did find aerials dating back a few years showing a dock there, so it's not brand new. But um, she understands that you know Coming it's outside. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, she's been. They've been the very very responsive open. to say the least. Um, so, but if you want to say any yeah, any the history more. is I bought the property. Um, in, in the name of my sons, but I mean, they were kids at that point. So I was the adult on the purchasing and building. I can't remember the exact date that I bought it. I'm gonna say something like 88. And then this plan is the sewage septic design. Uh, Walker's Pond is 91. And well, you found this, them. I did. <laughs> it's even labeled. Wow. Summer 1991, so it coincides with the septic. Thank you. I went through at least 10 albums. I thought it was earlier. Um, so the one picture I finally found, and there are more, I couldn't find the others, shows the shed. Thank you. <laughs> In all its glory, we'll <laughs> the thing. Yeah, that's about the same size of it. <laughs> it looks a little newer now, but. Yeah, I've got, this is. I'm recommending an after a uh, fact admin review for the shed just to get record of it. It's a one page form. It's what we talked about today, what you're gonna do with building. It would, it's also a one page form with conservation with the sh um, after the fact permitting for the shed. One page, $50 okay, so fee. That's what I'm recommending. They have to say yes or no. I'm just curious because it was there when I bought it, but that doesn't matter. It's up to them. Okay. Well, if the shed was there in 88, then it, it, it predates our regulations. Mm, 78. Our rate was 78? Yep. Oh, wow. It's up to you. We recognize, but it's just not on any site plans. Or yeah. what's on a, it's not a septic site plan. I also got an, int I called my general contractor that did the building in 91. Mm -hmm. She left me a really interesting phone message about the shed. She's a Harwich resident from growing up. Mm -hmm. 
so she actually knows the history of it mm -hmm. before mm. I moved in and she gave me a little of that I mean okay. she I she said she'd come and tell you it was there and I said I don't think they care <laughs> no, I think the doc, the doc is the more pressing thing and sounds like it's coming out on Friday and yeah. She happy to work it. with you. You've, you. She's already retained an engineer to help with that, mm -hmm. with the proper permitting. Yeah. It's so it's on a pond. It's not. It's not a saltwater permanent dock or anything. It's Walker's pond. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. they take it out every winter. Yeah. Yeah. Any comments around the table? Jim, any comments? Yeah, it sounds like Amy's uh, recommendations are, are are fine. I mean, it uh, seems like the, the shed should stay there one way or the other. But, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a, do you want to see an admin review for it or not? Is that necessary for documentation? For, for it's on, perspective? Um, I can put a note in the file. It's up to you. I, can, I mean, we have a copy of the site plan from 91 from the septic showing it in its location. The only thing, and you have to work with the building commissioner, get them the plan that shows that, because right now it's shown on her property line, which it couldn't be, but your neighbor evidently gave you 10 feet. So. And is the shed in the zero to 50 or 50 to 100? 50 to 100. Okay. It's probably about 60 feet away. Yep. Any comments, guys? Um, okay. Well, I, I tend to, you know, agree with Amy's recommendations to, um, you know, have the, the dock come out issue a one-time fine for the dock and then um, admin review for the shed. Fine. That's the part I need guidance on. I'll help you. Okay. Yeah, um, I'll it? walk out with you and we'll get the form. It's, oh, it's okay. a one-page okay. form. It's on the wall out here. It's basically an administrative review means the administrator, me, can approve it. But it's just so we have documentation and conservation that the shed is within the 100-foot buffer zone to the wetland. So you would submit copy of that plan or okay. um, and then that application it's very straightforward because it's already there um, it's a one-page form okay if you need help talk to Nikki or myself um, okay. it's a $50 fee that just gets everything legal okay and then the, the doc we can we can work on Friday it's we gone. appreciate it so the one-time fine we can do we usually do so we can go up to 300 we do up to usually do 300 mm -hmm. is that what you'd like me to do or I, I think to be consistent with recent illegal docks and this you know this is a case where I think you know the place is out in the woods and yeah you know things happened over time so this is not a very egregious situation no. at all but I think to be consistent with what we've been doing recently mm -hmm. we probably should issue the okay. 300 dollar fine okay um, but what kind it's three hundred dollars one time fine for the dock and then you'll be pursuing the proper permits. So you've retained White Ryder and Wilcox, so it, that's what you said, Ryder and Wilcox? My son. Your son I, did. I, okay. So you said you're on the right path. He's probably on, out of the country and he's working. So you're on the right path though. So he so retains it's me. <laughs> Okay. Well if you need any help, just you know how to find me. Yeah, I'll just grab and that would be I good. will. Yep. And then I, I can yep. give it to them. And should we issue the certificate? I of would compliance? recommend issuing the certificate of compliance for, for the property. Okay. Get this off, and this, this will, um, you can take this to the Registry of Deeds. To, it'll t come off your deed. This project will come off your deed. So it will no longer be a hindrance on your deed. Right oh, now, I got this, you. Is, this project here for the home is sitting on your deed so if there ever was a property transfer it would hold it up i got gotcha. you so once we give this to you in the next couple of days you can take it to the registry get it recorded comes off your deed okay you can when we pick it up we can go I think over that, it yeah all right did somebody request it for you or did you the certificate of compliance no i'm not i don't own the property i'm i'm a, I'm a substitute tonight I, oh completely okay i thought okay Sorry? I originally owned the property. I don't. Own I it. understand. Yes. Well, I didn't actually own it. I just built it for my gotcha. kids. Gotcha. Your son owns it, or just my like son completely owns it. Presently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I first bought it, I built it in trust for the two boys. One mm -hmm. boy bought the other boy out. Mm -hmm. They got of age to be past the trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then they gotcha. now he owns it outright. Yeah. And I'm here just because 
I have the pictures from when I started the project. And he's gone. <laughs> Thank you are, there, are there any resource betterment, betterments that could occur in lieu of a fee, the, the fine? It's pretty um, nice out there. Okay. Yeah. You know, the shed, but the shed's so old, it's been there, okay, forever. Sometimes we do that. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion? So this will be a motion to approve the certificate Third. of compliance for 94 Nathan Walker Road to relocate a single family dwelling. I make a motion to approve that. Second. 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 Um, and the motion would come with uh, a fine for the unauthorized dock. Yep. And then a request for administrative review. For the shed. Application for the yep, shed. Yep, I'm going to get it for on the, right now. Okay. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Please None sign opposed. this. Mark, I'll get you the yeah, form. No, okay, Mark. Great. Did. Thank you. Thank you. I started to, and Mark got yeah, jumped in. <laughs> He wasn't sure if it's anybody seconded it. I said, Mark, it. string of fairly light agendas but not Let, let's not I know <laughs> <laughs> well we had a long string of tough ones like for years yeah 10 30 I think oh really and are you guys into wastewater discussions yet you know, yeah, so. Wild, Wild Monday was wastewater. You and the guy they put out mm -hmm. uh, discussions on the uh, requirement to do uh, plans with the uh, professional engineer versus the sanitarium, oh. which is uh, it's still it's standing our, our neighbors, so we've had this in our neighborhood. It becomes an interesting discussion because the implication is sanitarium is going to be a lot. Well, two things. One is we're not sure we can't do it ourselves because we have to follow the Chatham regulations. And so, on the board, we could uh, make the, you know, approve that policy change, but then we can't go forward with it unless Chatham does the same policy change. Mm -hmm. And the question I have, and I wish I knew, is uh, is it really a great savings? Because now, if you put a septic tank in, there's a list of sanitariums and uh, PEs. And I assume the sanitarium is less expensive because it's, you don't have an engineer doing it. But I don't know how much less it will be. So it's significant. In, in Chatham, do they have that regulation yet? Not they have the, They still have, that's their regulation. Ours is. Engineers. Engineers, yeah. yeah. Well, and then, pr especially for our neighborhood, the price that we were given, I mean, I thought it was very reasonable. And then we discussed, uh, uh, John, you were talking about discussion because. So I heard. Well, everyone was in favor, but uh, basically, uh, one of our selectmen is, is very good at looking at the bylaws and uh, to be sure we're in charter. Okay. And so he, he was, his assignment was to go back and determine whether it's possible or not uh, oh. violation of the charter. Well, Amy, Amy has something to say. About right. That. That's why she wants you to hang on. Well, I was just gonna. <laughs> well, I mean, we just uh, we're trading notes on long meetings, which I don't. It's not competitive. I hope you guys win. <laughs> not tonight. We're not winning. Not compared to you guys on Monday. Not tonight. Either poison ivy or mosquito bites. But um, so, Brad and I talked to. So you know, it's like a couple people aren't here tonight. We've had an attendance issue and. John really wants to be on the CPC and be a full member, and Ernie has offered before, if it's an issue, because he's not here routinely, um, to step down and uh, talk to Ernie today. Yeah. And Ernie is, is a full member. Ernie, is a full full member. member right? Ernie yeah. would like to become an alternate. Okay. And John is willing to, um, if you will, basically I'm looking for the board's recommendation tonight to accept Ernie to become an alternate and um, 
recommend to the selectmen that John become a full member and that also John be our representative to the Community Preservation Committee because it was found out after a lot of back and forth that an associate member, alternate, whatever you want to call it, cannot be our representative to CPC. Mm -hmm. Ernie's fine with that. He's, um, he actually, I mean, he, he's the one who asked about it before, so. Mm -hmm. Just be sure you follow the uh, proper procedures. That being Ernie uh, officially. He's going to. File. He's going to do to, that to, uh, by Friday. Anita. So it's record that he's uh, resigning from the uh, commission. And then we have to, it will come to us. Reasons aren't clear to me, actually. But it comes to us. And then the, the meeting after that, we want to be sure that we have, uh, you know, fill out proper nomination, the nomination thing for a full member. Does he have to do that again? Yeah. Right. Go down to the selectman office for an application for that. Yeah. Okay. Because he already did that, but he got put on as associate or. Yeah. Who, no, yeah. That'll be fine. Don't do it. Don't do it. But do it. But like, do it. Do it. I want to make sure I have this clear. Right. Have it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, You're okay. okay. I'm gonna write. But the thing like an is, email tomorrow. Okay, just do it sequentially. Be sure Ernie. I would suggest that, that you uh, wait to act on this until you, Ernie's officially put in his resignation okay. letter to Anita and copy us because yeah. then that clears the books. That's fine. You have an opening and then you recommend. All right. Because he said he would do it by Friday. Yeah. So, but you're not going to make the agenda on Monday. Huh? All right. I mean, another week isn't going to kill things, well, right? Well, right. it's not. Huh? You, you make the recommendation. You guys do. Are we are we obliged to do that? I, I always wondered about that. Was I? Yeah. Like yeah, when I got on, the did you well, have to for a new member? No. Well, no. I mean, because he's an associate already. Normally, for a new member, we don't. Right. Um, because it's normally just an, just coming from the public. Coming from the board, yeah. Like yeah. It normally comes from so the board. So let me comment on that. The interview committees are, I'm not on the interview committee, each, each of those are somewhat different, but uh, the interview committee is uh, not obligated, but encouraged to talk to the uh, current members. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would often call the, the chair of the committee to get some yeah. feedback, because sometimes you guys know them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there's, it's not a requirement, it's not unusual yeah. to do that. Uh, it would be nice. Moment. Okay. Because it hasn't been happening. Yeah, people yeah. forget it. It's one of yeah. the things. Because on your committee, you don't want any case. It's just a, yeah. one okay. of those common sense things I feel comfortable doing. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we don't so have I'll to, we don't need to vote. Um, one quick question on Ernie. Um, so if he's going to be an alternate, is he interested in coming back if we have a vacancy? Because Ernie did a great job for us. And, uh, so I would, I'll ask him about it. Yeah. I can ask him about it. I know he's he was giving his away for the long part of the winter he was he told me he thought he might be doing this right but um that i guess that's an option that you could take it all if we had an great. opening yeah yeah well that put that put him in the same position that we have now as john you have yeah. some experience that right that's a short discussion you put him back on the uh, right and that's what associate know. members are supposed that's what the purpose is Not is to time. be like a training ground essentially yeah yeah, but we haven't done that a lot. We're always we, trying to fill vacancies. Right, we have, you don't usually have more people. Ideal, uh, and, you know, you're going to be our example, John, if I do this. <laughs> Pay attention and, you know, participate. <laughs> you do. Does he mean he's saying uh, he's going to uh, be even give a chance to wait longer than he had been? Yeah. Okay, so we'll put it on the next agenda, anyways. Um, okay. Because and Ernie he, hasn't he, officially given his resignation yet. He okay. said he will on Friday, but. Because we got one selectman that's just on this. We've got a couple okay. of That's okay. It wasn't so intentional on our end. We no. thought. And it's so, good, you know. It's good he is because we've got to be sure we. Yeah. So John doesn't have to go through the selectman because he had already done that and that's what him, got him to he be has to be, alternate. Still a no, he has he to still to has to be on the selectman agenda to get to appointed get. as a full member. And a member to see I meant the interview part and everything because they've already not. done no. that. Hopefully not. <laughs> and that's probably why we're recommending they it. They want to talk to me again. I'm, no, I'm, sure, I'm sure they love you, John. They're not going to talk to you twice. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> It'll be a consent agenda item. Yeah, yeah, we're just good. No reason to, uh, and I'll and I'll just confirm that with Julie. Uh, so I'll I'll follow that through to be sure it's not a consent agenda. So it wouldn't be for. So we have to vote well, we, on October third. We're not going to meet again until October third. But you don't have to meet to do this. I don't. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, can we do it? So we're other we're under other business, not anticipated right now. Can we vote or not vote, but just have an understanding that, like, if should Ernie submit his resignation, that John is to be recommended as the new member? Is that okay? I, I think typically we wouldn't vote on that. I, I think we'd vote on the CPC appointment, which we yeah. already have. We wanted him anyways. I don't think you play a role in this, basically. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. I mean, if, if you feel better, like, a, I'll send it. I'll put it in your minutes, you know, that okay. sense of it, that you would like the job to become a full member if you're okay. doing that. But you don't need any official action. I, at I all. think you're right. I just don't want to see him have to wait till the second meeting in October, you know. Well, I don't think we'll. Uh, as He's waited so this long. Contact me. <laughs> I know, but so we I need a member. Well, we need a quorum. Let me know as soon as uh, Ernie, Ernie sends his resignation. Sends and I'll get to do it. Uh, I told him selectman, but I will email him tomorrow or call him. Um, cause well, it's be, cause well, I'll tell him it's got to be to Anita. It is. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Let me uh, go elsewhere with this. Uh, That's fine. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Okay. But Just wanted to let you know that that's where we're going. Right. As soon as he goes to Anita, then I'll, uh, I'll contact you and you should be sending the same. Perfect. Because Monday, everyone was in agreement with it. We've just never encountered this before, really. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that legwork, Amy. There's China. Should we? We got a couple of continuances. Should yeah. We oh yeah. Those? Let's do those. So okay. everything else is pretty straightforward tonight. So the notice okay. of intent <laughs> Take care right. for eight Whipperell Lane. Yep. The installation of a seasonal floating pier in Dock and Bucks Pond is going to be continued. Um, I, I move we continue that hearing we'll second it. October 17th yep and stand, stand, October 17th yep. Oh, yep. stand seconded all those in favor uh, say aye. Aye. aye he's in front of waterways tonight by the way okay. so is that right over here no they're in the meet in the fire station okay this is historic they're packed tonight yeah they are busy all right and the second one is a notice of intent for the Turner property at 18 Strandway a proposal for steps dock and dredging they asked to continue to October 3rd as well? Yep. Uh, I move that we continue that hearing. Second. Seconded by Jim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Right, let's go on to the this too. I think we did that one already. We did. Oh, did yep. we? Yep. Do you want oh. to... Um, Where was I? You were here. <laughs> so that was the late... Oh. Oh, um, no, for... No, Lothrop. He announced it after... Yeah, that was way back. Yeah. That was before, but between the RDA and the um, Strandway. Yep. Okay. We did. Because it's not, I don't have it in the right order on my site summaries. Don't make me look at the video. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, we can do the next three all together if you want. Yeah, as long as it, they're issue free. They are issue free. Yeah. So for Winchmere Harbor Functions, 23 Snow Inn Road, um, this was only for a very small piece of their landscape between the hotel and the um, condos and it's actually been superseded by other more recent filings again this is Nikki and just doing housekeeping and trying to clear out old old uh, permits mm -hmm. so it actually is better it was supposed to be a privet hedge um, and a re realigned walkway they realigned the walkway um, they got rid of a gazebo and the privet is now um, sage and clump grasses which are better than privet and they take up a little bit bigger of an area. So I would recommend a cert for that one. For the town of Harwich, Pleasant Road, this is for the bathhouse. Um, we have the Asbilt for it. We recommend a certificate of compliance and a septic upgrade at 3 Mockingbird Lane. Um, old permit from 97. Disturbed areas are revegetated. Nikki's recommending a cert for that one as well. So those are the three. And I have something else for you. Okay. Anyone want to tackle that motion? I'll make a motion to approve the before mentioned three uh, certificates of compliance. 
Second. Second by Mark. All those in favor say aye. 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 Please sign all three. Carries. And I said I would bring this to you for discussion. I'll wait till everybody signs to get my stuff in order anyway. Do you think we'll see the Hinckley's alum treatment next? We will. Next, okay. I'm going to pass these out. I think there's 12 of them. Somebody may need to share because... Are these in your packet? Sorry, for Bosky? Yep. I oh, yeah. never. that's why I don't have 12 of them. <laughs> All right, finish that first and we'll do this. Yeah, the one that we took quite a long time on. Yeah. On Seymour. So, if you recall, the commission wanted the deck to be brought into conformance with the size it was supposed to be. And they asked, they're asking for a little bit more. Um, I said it was unlikely, but... It's up to you. What would they like? Um, see, do you get the letter with it? Yeah, let's see. Read the letter. Additional, additional board room. It's, it's saying it's additional boardwalk, but it uh, appears to be effectively additional deck. So, yeah, if you look at your landscape plan, that shows you best. Mm -hmm. um, they, yeah, were the boardwalk meets deck. And it's, it's essentially making a larger deck. Oh, that little chunk that right at the 50 line? Right at the water line. Three foot by 10 foot on the, uh, on the, the, the right right here. Oh, that, that little piece that, there. That's what they're trying to. Oh, I see. Yeah. And what are the dimensions of three it? Three by 10. Three by 10. They're asking to put that in and then remove 140 square feet of existing boardwalk. So remember the, the commission didn't really, there's a, th there's a hatch boardwalk line here. Mm -hmm. Remember the, com the commission, they were originally proposing to remove that in mitigation for some of the activity and the commission wanted to see in enhanced buffer strips, which is what we got. Mm -hmm. So they're asking now they're saying, well, we'll get rid of 140 square feet of walkway if we can have this 3 by 10. Um, it's up to you. I mean, the other, the, it's still in the 0 to 50. One's right on the water. The other one's on the, in the grass area. So. How does everyone feel about that? It's a Essentially, where the walkway, where the walkway that they're proposing to give up is, that would just become grass. Right. And it's, so I don't know how much of a you, benefit. Do you remember how big that that deck was? We're, we're having it reduced. In this it's plan. 16 by 10. Um, it was almost double that yeah, size. 16 by 32, I think. Yeah, 16 by 32. Or, or 10 by 32. No, it was bigger than 10 by 32. Yeah, I think it was it's 16. It's considerably smaller than what it was. Yeah. This is. Uh, 10 by 16 was what was approved originally. That's right. about, so that's about half. The size. And so, yeah. They're trying to gain just a little back. Yeah. Uh, it's I up to you. I don't think there's a lot of significance to that 30 square feet, but at the same time, it, you know, the deck was put in, was not authorized. We brought it back to what it was authorized. Now they want to bump it up again. So. You tell me. How do people feel? I think it's what they're asking for to me is relatively insignificant. Um, all things being equal, I think we probably have done more, much more good than harm here. So I think it's a reasonable compromise. You are getting rid of. 110 square feet of hardscape in the 0 to 50, even though you're allowing a little bit more closer to the water. Right. So one thing that's curious to me about 
the drawing here, if it's accurate, is they're showing the seasonal pier and it would be an extension of this additional bit of boardwalk that they're oh. asking for. So if they were denied the boardwalk, what, what would that mean about the pier? Well, the pier is seasonal, so it shouldn't be a... Do they already have a pier? I believe so, yeah. So they've got a license. It yeah, says approximate location of existing seasonal dock. Yeah, they'd just jog it if we did, did Oh, not, yeah, that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, if we didn't approve that, they would just jog it back over. Or they'd have to walk in the dirt to get to the dock. Whatever. Well, it keeps that area that much cleaner. To me, it's advantageous. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Oh yeah, there's a license number. It it almost is a wash to me, so does it need a variance? Um I'd say it's a both of them are in the zero to fifty and you're getting a reduction technically in the zero to fifty if you were to permit this, so mm -hmm. I put it on as a change in plan. If you want to see it more formally, you can let me know. I'm sure yeah. you'll come back. What, what's this, the structure of the boardwalk? Is it just um, planks with sitting on bricks or sitting on four by fours? I think they're sitting on four by fours out there. Yeah. It's a little bit raised, but not much. Yeah. I don't know why people put those in. It just seems like it's was the case. Um, so it almost seems like a wash. If, if they were going to plant some of that and not have it lawn, it would be really positive. You could ask them to do a couple more shrubs in addition to their, uh, I'm sure they might consider that. They could add a few to their landscaping plan, see how they feel about it. Yeah, maybe where it, the boardwalk comes up, up against the, the present landscaping plan put a few more there. Yep, it already goes right up to it, but yeah. Figure something out. Yeah. Anybody oppose that that trade? Nope. Nope. Jim, you okay with that? Yeah. That okay. Sounds good. Maybe if you could specify like a, a, a few I will. Um, plants. Like yeah, I'm not going to leave plants. it open-ended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so just change of plans is fine. I think. Do you need a vote for that? Yes, please. Okay, I move that we accept the proposed change of plans for the approved notice of intent for the Bosky residence on Four Lake Shore Drive to install a three by ten piece of um, boardwalk adjacent to their deck, and at the same time removing 140 square feet of existing boardwalk. I second it. Second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Got a couple sets of minutes. And then actually for executive session, um, I had put it on there thinking we might have updates. There's really no updates, but we can go into executive session to better discuss the minutes that we had last time. We had some questions on that were executive session minutes. Amy, so. were we supposed to hold on to our minutes last time? Because I don't have. You don't have new sets? I don't, have, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have new sets. Ooh. Um, sorry about that. So maybe what we just do, because I don't think we want to sit here and read them. I just put them on the next time. Yeah, unless you want us to knock out one of them. Don't worry, I'm not worried about it. Okay. Um, okay. Well, and then maybe I'll have more information about executive session next time, too. Okay. Does that yep. sound okay? You don't have much to offer right now? For? Executive session. Yeah, let's not go in unless we need to. I put it on thinking we might, okay. but we're not there yet. Okay. A um, couple of quick announcements. Yep. This uh, Saturday, well, this it's not conservation related, but it's a good project for the town. Um, we have the Big Fix, which is the Housing Assistance Corporation. Um, almost like a Habitat for Humanity-esque type day. Um, so it's still not too late if you want to help out. We already have a hundred. We already have 350 volunteers from the town of Harwich wow. coming to help out. We actually have more volunteers than we have projects, which is awesome. That's so, 
Can't wait to see what I'm going to be doing on Saturday <laughs> morning. <laughs> I did put landscaping preferred. Um, but if anybody wants to still help out, I'm sure we can find room. And then next Saturday is our annual Harwich, well, International Coast Sweep cleanup. So every year we partner. It's an international foundation. Um, many countries in the world try to clean their beaches within the same month of each other, and we actually tally the results of what we find. We actually count all the items of trash that we find to see what is being washed, what is washing up. So if you want to participate in that, um, it's going to be at 9 a.m. at Sacquatucket Harbor. We're going to start from, and it won't last later probably than 11. And um, you can sign up on the Harwood Conservation Trust website. And you kind of, there's, there's no, uh, as you get there, we're going to assign you to beaches. It's not as um, formal as the tour to trash where we sign up for routes that, ahead of time. Is that like the one you did last year? Yep, like same thing. Okay. Yep, at Sacquatucket Harbor, we, we don't get, because actually there's a, another cleanup going on. Cape, it's like the Cape wide cleanup the weekend before, and I'm like, please, t please don't do Harwich. So we actually have something to pick up on the 29th. <laughs> is it Coast Sweep? That's what it, it is. It is Coast yeah. Sweep. Yeah, yep. that happens every year. Yep. So that's on the 29th. Um, I forget. There's some other stuff coming up. Heading into workshop season, so I'll be sending around all that information. You have your handy dandy membership cards now that were on top of your packet from MACC. You're looking at me like you don't. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. You know what I was actually thinking yeah. of is the other one in Hyannis, the the the, the, re, the preserve. Is that going to be done in December to again? Yep, they did the save the date, but they haven't sent the sign up right. yet. John, when you become a full member, you will have the I've been card. Getting the emails. Oh, good. I did. I did ask them to do that for you. Um, but right. I saw there was one, but I didn't want to go to Lemonster. Yeah. Wait till they come well, down here. Lemonster is a beautiful town. Well, no, I went to one in Worcester. No, no, I went to one in Worcester last winter. I remember playing softball there as a kid. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> used to drive up through there before there were interstate highways going on up to New Hampshire. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We are um, starting to tackle these violations. They're coming in fast and furious right now. Um, we have another doc. I got a phone call about another one um, when I got back here tonight at 6. And... Um, we got to start. Uh, I got to coordinate the bog stuff. Um, it's just been. There's a lot going on. Well, I'm trying to help other departments with conservation related things, but it's to the point now where it's like I have to stop doing that because I can't do my own job sometimes. Mm -hmm. But um, starting to get on associations, um, properties who live, who have association property on the water for storage of. Um, kayaks, canoes, stand-up paddle boards, stuff like that, because in some areas it's really starting to have a really bad de detrimental effect. Um, Beach grass. Yep. Yeah. Well, and in this case, one, um, Long Pond, an area where there was in about a hundred, not even a hundred foot long stretch, there was probably 15 kayaks, and it's all in BBW. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not our property, but it is the wetlands, so I posted a sign and evidently caused an uproar. Um, saying, you know, explaining why it's not a good thing and please take your personal watercraft up with you when you leave the beaches, like, after this year, please cease doing this because further action could be taken, so. What about being the end of the, getting near the end of the season? Docks. The issue of floats. Oh, yeah, we're getting there, too. Okay. <laughs> kind of, as, as we, no, as we gradually curious. can, yep, yep. Well, you've got me. I know, I have your list. I have your list. We had AmeriCorps out for um, two days last week. They've been here for all of ten days at the time. Had the Bourne and Wellfleet House out talking about plant identification um, and, base and plant removal. Um, unfortunately, one of them hit a ground wasp nest, oh. and we ended up going to Fontaine. Um, good thing they were not allergic because they got stung over 20 times. Uh, that's a bad day. That's their, that was that person's first day out in the field. But he goes to me, he's like 21 years old, don't worry about this. this happened many times before. I'm like, <laughs> you tell me to. <laughs> I just, it was, 
Out like, of all I, of I them. Punch. I've never been bitten by one of those, but. I, they keep going. The thing is, is unlike bees, which sting once and die, wasps will keep stinging you. So uh, it was it was a nightmare. Where was that? That was at Thompson's Field. So what we're doing at Thompson's Field, if you drive by now, looks a little different. Um, all the juvenile or the saplings that are were starting to come back up on the 39 side, pitch pines and oaks. I had them go in with brush mowers, um, taught them how to use brush mowers, mm -hmm. go in there and take care of the stump sprouts to promote the heathland, and which is doing so good out there. If you walk through it, it's it doesn't look like much from the road, but and people ask you pretty soon, once those stumps are another year, those stumps that are high that look terrible, we will flush cut them, but they have to fish they have to die. It takes them a couple years for the roots and everything to die off. Just start them like before we flush cut them. Because if you cut them flush when you first cut them, they'll stump sprout like crazy. But if you cut them waist height and let them die for a year, they don't. Well, oaks still do. Pitch pines don't. Yeah, they do. I tried. And in regards to the that sort of management, um, bugs and stuff. Can the town, or, or is the town, doing anything with invasive species like knotweed? I mean, can can volunteers do that? Or yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if people want to do manual removal, yes. Um, I mean, it seems like that. It seems. It has to be chemical. It, that it, it, I mean, it can be that over the counter, or whatever. Rodeo or Roundup, but I mean, what's what's your opinion? On Technically, that? in in sensitive wetland areas, it should be a certified applicator. Yeah. Doing a, a it with a cut and wipe, but if a lot of it's not, no. I mean, I'm like I'm, still should be doing a cut a and wipe method. On, uh, town on property. Right. Is what I'm getting at. I, I, I guess we're not really doing anything about it. Right? No. It'd be nice to see uh, some sort, even if it's just volunteers. It seems to be a pretty straightforward thing with that injector they have. You yeah. Know, inject it and move, it paints it a little bit. Yeah, it would have to be something the commission would be, you know, think, show, you know, maybe go out to an area, look at an area, come up with something that's feasible, a feasible size to start with, yeah. and then propose it. Is it thinking of conservation lands or some Con resource area? Well, conservation lands, not so much wetlands. Um, there's a, there's a bad area of it in like the Monomoy woodland, Woodlands or yep. by Muddy Creek. It's yep. a, I think it's where there used to be a uh, structure before the town owned it. And at this point, you know, there's probably close to a quarter acre that's wow. pretty much knotweed wow. and it's spreading. I know what you're talking about. Pretty fast. That's big. And, uh, you know, I think it is manageable. I think a few volunteers, mm. even one day per year, could eradicate that in a year or two. Um, just with that injection method, but it would have That's to be. That's the injection method? We can also call it the cut and white method, where yeah. you cut the plant and essentially take um, the, a glyphosate based and. Well, they are recommending, there is another method that yeah. people are using now that I've heard is preferred at this point. Okay. Um, which is to More of an injection. simply inject it. You don't cut anything. It, really? It, you go up to it and then between like a syringe. The, the first and second uh, growth Knots. rings or whatever, yeah. you, you inject it. Huh. And, and they have a tool. Oh, costs, I didn't even uh, know that. $250. And it has a little paint marker on it, too, so you can see what you've done. And hmm. they say that 98% in one injection. Um, and you have to do it in the fall yeah. between late August and uh, hmm. October. Or early October. Huh. That, but it's that's specific to knotweed or specific or? to knotweed? Yes. Yeah. What about other invasives like like those? So, some of them might be more complex, but a knotweed that that method just seems to lend itself yeah. to volunteers or AmeriCorps or whatever. You know, yep. it's, it's simple. AmeriCorps is not allowed to be doing that. Shuttle I don't that. think. The bittersweet I've traditionally done with we've done with the cut and wipe method. Same thing with the Phragmites, but Frag actually because it's a bamboo similar to knotweed, maybe it would um, respond to an injection as opposed to cutting and then wiping it. It's, it's interesting. It's just, yeah, it seems like it's relatively manageable, but it's get growing uh, All right, we'll less take, manageable with every we'll have to take a look at year that passes. Um, no, we definitely should before and, it gets and, out of control. Know, I don't know what, you know, I've been trying to figure what happens eventually. 
it seems like it just stays not lead. It just slowly expands and nothing can get in there. Yeah, what makes it invasive, seen. yeah. It's pretty powerful. I mean, it, it, it does have a hard time spreading mm. in areas that are established. Yeah, but it, right. But, but it likes newly disturbed I'm areas. On my woodland, so this kind of slowly I spreading. know where you're talking. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. kind of outliers, hundreds of feet away from the main core. And, mm -hmm. um, I'm interested to see that uh, okay. addressed. <clears throat> you know, we're definitely heading into land management season here. So, um, planted a bunch of plants down by the oh, Seymour yeah. Flume today. Oh, good. How'd that go? It went great. See if I get poison ivy again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought you weren't allergic to poison ivy. No, I am. Didn't you say a few weeks ago? I used to not be, but a couple weeks ago I had it, and I said, I really got it this time. <laughs> Something like that. Surprise. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no, a couple weeks ago I was getting itchy spots at the last meeting. That's right. Yeah. Just a little? Hmm? So you used to never get it, now just getting a little bit? No, I get it full blown. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. when I get it. Um, I, the last time I got it, I had immediately after been, I was um, exposed. Um, and I knew I was exposed. I was in the Bell's Neck and people using weed whackers. Oh, um, I went home and bathed in tech new. Yeah. Um, and I did the same thing today. But um, so anyway, the run, I'm, you were talking about putting, so this is the Seymour the herring run that goes into Seymour Pond and um, Division of Marine Fisheries had to redo the flume um, last year. A couple of years ago. A couple years ago. Yeah. So we replanted a lot of the disturbed area because the highway department had to come in with a machine. Um, so there was a little bit of disturbance. So we've, things are filling in quite well anyways. Right, but we but planted. At, at the flume it took a pounding with the March yeah. storms last year. Right. Took a lot of material off the I burn. think we need more rocks behind that. I was worried about what happened there. Those three storms hammered that spot. Right so now, the, the water. Waves? We, yeah, yeah. Yeah, north wind. It's on the, the, south, no side. It's on no, the south side. The south so side the north winds south just south kill it. Your winter storms, we had three in, I think, yeah. March maybe, that just mm -hmm. took so much material off that berm. Yeah. yeah. And if it happened again this winter, I'd start to worry about it, you know, the integrity of the berm. So. I think we need a little bit, because I, we got some, well, I bought some soil, some compost, and put it in the, the holes with the plants today. But I was looking at the area that you were talking about putting loam and seed right on the edges. And right now, I think, because the water's actively, like, lapping up behind and in front, mm -hmm. so I think we need to get some more rocks in there first. Yeah. Um, and then maybe loaming and seeding. Uh, I don't know if we can do that. This, hopefully we can do it soon. Was Heinz with you today? He was with me today. Yeah. Um, I guess highway, the way they got rocks in last time was with a mini excavator. And I would hate to, I mean, we just planted and everything else. I wouldn't want to go in there with that. I almost wonder if you could get like a skiff, if you could launch in the Brewster side and get a skiff over there. You could the first time we, we put this flume in. You don't in, need much. And then winter ice um, pushed it up the very first year. And so that was a problem. Um, some boards were left in. It's supposed yeah. to, it's got an operation plan to take the boards out. The boards stayed in. It got pushed up. So when we reset it, we brought stones in with yeah. by wheelbarrow. And, but then we had. You could still do that here. We had highway come in and we just said, we're going to just set this thing to last forever. And it's pretty solid. But they brought it in with a, a skid steer, perhaps, some small little mini. And um, so I, I agree with you, too. I think we should get smaller stone, though, to fill in the holes. I agree, yeah. Because we have the big stones, and the water's getting in it, yeah. and behind it, and eroding the land. So if we bring in inch, inch and a half stone, or, or bigger, a little bigger, to fill in the holes, and then loam it, and seed yeah. it, it would be better. I agree. It's a little bit of work with wheelbarrows, but it, we, we did it. And you don't need that much. Yeah. and but. It, you will tear it up if you bring in a machine. And I, I think don't want to bring in a machine. No, things are growing back in nice. So I, I think I like the idea of just getting a bunch of wheelbarrows, bringing stuff in, yeah. and then packing it. We left um, a w plenty wide enough area to go in with wheelbarrows. We mm -hmm. basically did two rows of plants okay. today. Okay. There was plenty of room to get in with the wheelbarrow still. So what was there before? 
It was a wooden flume that was there for nice. many, many, many years, and it was um, managed. Cahoon. You know, Cahoon's Canal, uh -huh. and he, he built cranberry bogs there, and eventually they went away, but it, it still was a herring run. And so we were asked by the town, probably 2010 or 11, to consider replacing the flume. So my agency went in and we, we built the flume. And, um, but it's a wooden pressure treated flume, so it's gonna have a life of about 25 years. Yeah. So it's one of those sites where it'd be pretty hard construction to put it in something more permanent, like a concrete flume. Which well, is hard to get into the site anyways, because it's it. not right off the road. Right, so, uh, you know, that, that's the plan is to maintain it. It's, it's a nice structure, but it's, you know, if you have storms and they tear up that berm, it, it could threaten the integrity of the structure. We so. could you the the grass seed took that you put down there took very well, mm -hmm. but we'll probably go back in and do another seeding this fall. Okay. For the rest of that area. All right. Let's um, let's keep on it so we don't. But yeah. If you want to go down and take a look. Yeah. Um, I'll in. see if we can get some stone. Okay. Down I somehow. Was in Monday. I've got a, a quick. I saw uh, Don Bates today, so. Oh yeah, he, he came down. He's interested in the uh, the culvert there on the road. I've been talking to him. He might. We might see if there's some grant possibilities or CPC opportunity, but it's hard because it's private. I've, I've told them several times, I think that the homeowners really need to step up and maybe they can partner in some way with another grant opportunity because yeah. it is a herring one, but it is private. A very large piece of concrete on the downstream side slid down this last it. year. So that's, it's getting worse. It's getting much worse and it contributes so much sand to the herring run. So if you were to build... The roads have been eroded more since the downpour yesterday. Because yeah. I was down there last week and I was down there again today. It's, you, could, you could resolve that with a nice head wall, wing walls. I told that to Don. I said, it really just needs a brand new goal art. Yeah, it, I kind of hinted that. It's, you know, it's private, so you guys, it's infrastructure. We'll help you with... Yeah. Help, like, if we can, we'll help you, but... Yeah, but you can't expect permitting. the town to pay for it all. No, um, I mean, not financially. I mean... Maybe with a design or something yeah. like that, we have that ability, you know. Maybe even machinery. Well, one yeah. other thing in regards to the herring run. Remember, Amy, last spring I contacted you like a, about um, area north of Route Six on Herring River. So he may not remember, but so about a, a thousand yeah. fifteen hundred feet north of Route Six, someone had kind of put in like an ATV park and they actually built bridges across the herring run. Felled trees and built uh, timber bridges. But, uh, yeah, I, I do remember now. <laughs> do you um, remember that? Yes, I remember our yeah, conversation. This one, uh, I never followed through with. North you of Route. Yeah, um, north of Route Six. Is no. this what Noel emailed me about the other day? No, that's what totally said. Oh, okay, I didn't think so. Um, this, so this you can access from the end of Headwaters Drive. There's a bunch. Oh, of yep trails in there and whatnot but if you kind of walk along the river heading towards route six um somebody has a, a extensive atv park going on in there um and they they built bridges across the herring run um, is that where the two tupelo two both tupelo drives <laughs> are cut off by the by the river might be that Tupelo Probably. is up there. Uh, as far, uh, no, no, this is um, and just in the wooded area. It's town conservation. Yep. Um, and we're north drive north of Route north 6. North of Route 6, yeah. That may only be 800 feet. Yeah, you some, showed me. I can picture there. it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on down there with, you know, campfires and whatnot. Maybe, and Jim, we can take a walk so I can get on this. That's always been happening. But the fact that they actually felled uh, significant trees and built a bridge yeah, right across bad. the herring run, it actually seems like it could, you know, if something happened, it could possibly obstruct the run. And, um, I'm surprised Heinz doesn't know about it. Yeah, let, I'll, it's, it's, let's it's, take a walk, if you isolated don't mind. It's area. This happened through mountain biking and yeah. <laughs> these weird places, so I see things. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Tear it out. I have a question since we're chatting. Is there any support for uh, doing anything with the cranberry bogs over to Bell's Neck? from the pump, or pump house in the north. Well, I think he's been talking about getting some discussion going. Yeah. I think you weren't here last time. We, we talked about it a little bit. And, um, you know, we, we have to manage that property some way. And so we, Amy felt like we shouldn't, uh, you know, wait forever before we discuss it again. So I think that's, you know, 
process of putting stuff together. Yeah. Getting people yeah. together. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we have to. I think we're responsible to manage that property. So yeah, they're yeah. Part of it. yeah. Let's see a couple quick updates. Um, I'm working with Division of Marine Fisheries in Orleans to take apart a fishway at Pilgrim Lake, and we're going to demo it tomorrow and bring the materials to the Harwich landfill mm -hmm. to stage for the fishing reef of the Harwich. More reef stuff. Um, more reef material. Pretty small amount, you know, one Sorry. truckload, but it's just a cool concept to, you know, take apart an old fishway and, and put it there. I did talk to Link, and, and he's, he's fine with that concept. And then a second new business item, um, we've been talking about the Oyster Reef yep. and Herring River. The Chronicle called me up and asked me status. I guess they heard about it. And so I, I, we've already talked about this, but I've kind of committed to start working on the marine fisheries permit. Um, I'm gonna do the local. Right, so I, I, if I committed to them, I guess I'm gonna have I to I gave go Bill, I mean, your, your draft is public document, right. so I gave that to him, he asked for it. Yep, and I think that's fine, and I think it's, it's time for me to get busy, so that'll be my fall project to start that permit. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna go quickly, but we'll chip away at it. Yep. So, any other new business? Nope, okay. I guess 8.30. Yeah. All right, am I? 8.30, yeah. I can get used to that. Well, I, I move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.